want to do a little bit of a walkthrough of our ePro. It seems to get uh, a lot of attention at the campsites and on the road. Well, I haven't seen any other ones in our travels over the last nine months. Um, we love it. It's it's good for us at this this point in time um, in our first try at uh, owning and using an RV and going camping with it. We're weekend campers, uh, anywhere from three to five days over a weekend is, is how we use it. We love it. Uh, there are some issues that I'll bring up, uh, but overall it's a fabulous, well-built uh, trailer. It's made by Flagstaff. And uh, it, it has a fine fit and finish. It's 19 feet long. It's designated an FBS, which uh, I believe is a forward bunk arrangement. They have several arrangements. They have a, a Murphy type bed and different bunk arrangements. But I'll go through as much as I can. We're going to have some weather here, and I need to get this back to storage so I don't end up getting soaked. If you have any questions, go ahead and uh, ask me and I'll try to cover any issues in the future if, you, if you're really that interested. As I might have mentioned in another video, we originally towed this with a 2011 Ford Escape. ePro is built to be uh, handled by a mid-size SUV. It was three liters and it did just fine, you know, around town and flat roads. But, you know, I was white knuckling it on going up hills and there was a little bit of sway, even with the sway bars installed. And uh, we decided to go ahead and get a Ford F-150 5 liter. And now we don't even know it's there. I believe it weighs about 3,100 pounds unloaded. I don't really have a script for this, so I'll just do a walk around as I come across things. I'll describe the, the features and uh, the things we like and the things that we don't like. It does have two five-gallon tanks uh, for propane. It comes with one battery. It has capability for two. Um, their idea, I believe, is to take advantage of the built-in solar system. We don't have the solar panels installed. Uh, they install the roof and it's pre-wired, pre-plugged for all of that. We have lost power and it was for a few hours and we ran on a battery and we had no issues with it. One of the things I am going to do and I recommend because we use a sway bar system, it requires a lot of up and down movement uh, on a tow assembly here. That's manual, and I'll tell you what, I wish I had the electric. So I, I don't know what it costs, but I'm going to have the electric installed and make things a lot easier. The landing gear are used to just provide stability. There's one in each corner. They provide a, uh, you know, a handled system to, to manually raise it up and down. I just put a three-quarter inch uh, nut driver on my uh, electric drill and hold around with me, and they go up and down real fast. One thing you need to do, though, is make sure you frequently lubricate the uh, screw on there because it gets dirty. and. I noticed that when I lubricate it, it works a lot better. This is the storage, external storage compartment. It travels from the, you know, completely from the left to the right side. Holds quite a bit. Um, one thing to keep in mind if you do own one of these or get one is that the wall that separates it from the rest of the trailer isn't sealed. So if you leave the the hatch open, you're exposing the interior to bugs, weather, temperature, that sort of thing. So when you're running AC, uh, you're going to be cooling the outside if you leave these doors open. 
it's a fine finish in there, a nice smooth fine finish, easily cleanable. Our city water connection, we hook up to at the sites when they have water. I also hook it up here at home to, to flush uh, the system out. There's also uh, a fill port there for the uh, storage tank, which uh, supplies the onboard water pump if you're operating off of the uh, water pressure from, from a facility or city. The large black hatch there covers the uh, water heater uh, valves control. There is an on off switch in there. It has to be on in order to use the water heater. Don't turn it on unless you have water uh, availability. You'll, you'll ruin the heater. Uh, there are a couple more switches associated with that inside the trailer. You see here our slide out is out and it adds a lot of room to this little trailer let me tell you it makes a big difference as you'll see looking at the right side here uh, I have the awning extended uh, it's fairly sturdy sturdy I pull it in if the wind gets too high um, it really only drains water when it well when it's fully extended like it is right now. I could go down just maybe a tad bit more. There's a design flaw associated with this which I'll show you here in a moment. Uh, we also have a little rail here. There's a, uh, a bar that we can attach to that and uh, it serves as a ledge. A table, external table. There's also a grill that comes with it. You can attach the grill, or sit it on top of the table. And there's a, you know, aftermarket grills that uh, will fit on side that bar, so that you can have an external grill. Got two AC outlet plugs also. One of the things I don't like is I, I believe it's just a design issue. Is uh, as you can see, the door there is partially open. In order to open and close it, it rubs across the uh, underside of the awning. There isn't enough clearance for it to get by there. It leaves black marks, and of course, it's going to wear away the coating. So, I wish they would have thought that one out ahead of time. They also have uh, an external speaker there. Another problem that maybe I just don't know how to work yet, but uh, when you turn the internal speakers on, it goes on and I haven't been able to uh, figure out to separate the two if it's even possible. So if you're listening to, you know, a movie or radio or stereo and you have the speakers on inside, it uh, projects outside as well and that's not always good. One feature we like are these uh, stairs. They go to the ground, there are two legs underneath that will adjust for height. You can see one of them sticking out down there. That actually extends, there's a pin that holds each of the legs. So if you have further to travel and you want to level the stairs, you just extend those legs individually and you can even everything up. The only problem with it is, is that uh, the trailer sits very low to the ground. If you get on an uneven spot, left to right, trailer listing, the stairs may not go all the way down enough to allow, you see that black thing on top, that will hit the door, prevent the door from closing. We run into that once, I had to raise the whole trailer up, the wheels up, in order to get the stairs to work. This is the back left side, our uh, 30 amp power service, there's the cable satellite inputs and then a port for flushing the uh, sanitary tank. Speaking of sanitary, one of the things that uh, I do not like, I, I know it's just a function of the size of the trailer, is for those of you who have 
you may not be able to see that very well, but that's the, the discharge for the gray water and the sanitary tank. If you look at it, it is very low to the ground. And since the trailer is not that large, when we go to hook up at a facility, it's generally barely, if at all, downhill to the receptacle, their sewage receptacle. So in order to completely drain that, I have to manipulate the hose. It just does not drain purely, completely by gravity on its own because it's too low. The other thing that I wished it had, this is the back, is a ladder. There is maintenance to be done on top. Uh, I don't know why they didn't put a ladder on there. There's also no bumper. I expect that's because they don't want people overloading attaching stuff back here and changing the center of gravity whatever I, it's not a big deal to me but the ladder would have been nice the other thing I need to do is take these covers off and clean they're not screened it's just a, uh, a vent system that's the back side of the refrigerator and uh, down below I believe the, you know, the inverter power supply Bugs will go in there, and dirt, and dust. So that needs to be cleaned. Okay, we do have a screen door. Uh, there's a little plexiglass slide there to be able to handle the door from the inside, the external door. We have doggies, and I'm surprised the door has lasted. They haven't really uh, messed with it at all. It's not very sturdy, but it keeps the bugs out. That's what's important. This is the entrance, the back end. As you can see, there's a microwave refrigerator. Below is a fuse panel and the inverter uh, cooling. And then our bathroom. It's a, you know, a shower and a sink and a toilet. And there you go. The vent fan, very important. And a skylight, which probably doesn't function so much as a skylight, is just a place for me to put my head and take a shower because I'm a little over six feet tall and I can tell you my head fits right up in that little cubby. It is small, but it works. And just as a piece of advice, get soap on a rope, because if you drop your soap, you won't be able to pick it up without busting out of that thing. Unless, of course, you're a pygmy. One thing we have found is that we always bring more than we actually need. It's plenty big enough for just the two of us. One of the things that uh, I am intrinsically new and then was warned about is humidity and moisture inside a trailer. It'll destroy everything and you'll get mold and uh, that sort of thing. So when we store it, the door is open. The other thing I do is uh, I put desiccant in the trailer. Uh, there's one of them. I put a couple of them. You have a refillable white pellets you see on the top. I got those from West Marine. In the course of a week being stored, airtight, and with a refrigerator door open after use and cleaned out, yep, that will fill up with water. That's how much moisture is in the air. And uh, when I pick the trailer up, Everything is nice and clean. It's not musty, mildew, smell, none of that stuff. Sink area is not very big at all. You have to 
You have to be organized. We put a cutting board over the sink to add food prep area. And there's a glass top on top of the burners. There's three burners underneath that glass top, gas burners. And there's an oven below. This model seems to be very common in a lot of manufacturers' trailers. There's plenty of storage for food items, dry goods, and all your utensils. And we can store pots and pans below or inside the, the uh, oven. Bed hood's lighted. Uh, and it vents overboard. You do want to use it anytime you cook because it's a small space and you're using propane and uh, your alarms will go off, not just from the propane but from the smoke if you cook uh, something that smokes. We try to do our cooking outside but we found it very fast. It's very sensitive, the alarm system anyway. Lighting in here is fabulous. It's all LED. And when you look at these lights, they're individually, you can turn them on and off, you just press them. There's a master switch. The fit and finish in here is very nice. You, you look at some trailers, you see a bunch of staples sticking out and things, you know, uh, plastic, fake wood type stuff. This is all highly cleanable, tight, no seams. The doors are upgraded kitchen quality and they snap shut as well as the drawers they kind of kind of have a detent and they lock in there so they don't go flying open and we'll get into all the specifics of the control panel but from your lights the water heater can be uh, control of heated electrically or gas or both there are tank level indicators, external light controls, and of course the awning, extend retract, as well as the slide out. I know it's difficult from a video to get perspective here, but uh, the couch is probably almost six feet long, pretty close to it. Plenty of room in here. We operate with the uh, without the couch. We actually that pulls out into a bed, a single bed, and that's where the dogs. We try to get the dogs to sleep. We cover it, of course. It's leather, and then Ford is the queen size bed. It's a short queen, same width, but uh, seventy. I think 76 inches or 75 inches versus 80 inches long. And above that there's some storage. Towels, clothes, extra sheets, that sort of thing. Below the bed there is no storage other than the, the pull-out drawer. That's where we keep our coffee pot and emergency lights and a little vacuum cleaner, that sort of thing. The other vent there is for uh, access to uh, that's where access to the water heater pumps, bypass valves, uh, fresh water pump, that sort of thing. And that leads to those, uh, and beyond that would be the, the, that pass-through storage out front that I showed you. And then there's a hang-up closet. And it's, it's worked pretty good for us. We put about shirts or jackets and stuff in there. I hang my fishing vest and put some shoes down below. But again, for three or four days and you know, you're not going to be going to any formal events, it's uh, pretty easy to take what you need to go camping. This is the entertainment center. Um, you can operate the TV without the speakers above. Those are, gen are driven by that little box in the middle. That's the equivalent of a home entertainment receiver, stereo. You can uh, take inputs from the TV, uh, Bluetooth from your cell phone. It will answer your calls just like uh, 
you know, the, inter you know, the system in your car. Uh, it will take HDMI inputs, it will take USB inputs, and then you can select the source on the front of the panel. And then control the volume of the speakers, and as I was saying before, those speakers, when you drive those, it drives the external speaker. I have looked at the manual, I cannot for the life of me figure out how to separate the two. If anybody knows, let me know because it's kind of hard to use the system inside at night and you don't want to disturb other people and think blaring. Behind the TV, um, there is a charging center, 12 volt. Also USB, we can charge our uh, phones or anything that's USB powered. There's an on-off switch for our Wi-Fi extender. This unit comes with a Wi-Fi extender and it does work. Uh, you turn that on and it will take any wi -Fi, weak Wi-Fi signals and amplify them. Uh, you do have to set it up uh, with an app and uh, you know give it a security code and password, that sort of thing. And then when you arrive at a site, you have to connect it to their their uh, you know uh, Wi-Fi source, and then uh, all your you know your iPads, computers, phones, anything is Wi-Fi capable. We'll just talk to the Wi-Fi extender, and you can let other people use it too. I mean, it's up to you, but we just we just use it for ourselves. It does make a difference. We have uh, figured that one out. Uh, this system's capable for you know the cable that you plug into at a site. Also it is pre-wired for a digital satellite. There's an external connector on the trailer and you connect your satellite dish and then you can connect your box in here uh, and to drive the, uh, the monitor TV unit. It does have a uh, digital capable antenna so if you don't have cable uh, I've used it here and at some of the sites just out of curiosity it will pick up the local stations clear as far as environmental control we mostly have used the AC unit and this is kind of one of my beefs I, I don't know if there's much you can do about it because it is noisy the compressor sits right on top of that the fans not so bad it's the compressor when it runs oh and here's our uh, That's our uh, air freshening system. These uh, gain dryer sheets. Yeah, it doesn't overwhelm you, but it keeps everything uh, smelling nice just in case something uh, odious finds its way inside the trailer. I wish they'd move this further aft because it's so near the bed, and I know they're trying to distribute there evenly, but just another four feet aft would actually make a huge difference because the TV is also right there so in order to hear the TV with the air conditioning running it's it's really just an issue of competing decibels and you're really going to turn that TV up to be able to hear it We've been lucky at night, it's been cool enough we can turn it off, but if we had to run it, I'll tell you, it's, uh, I can get by with it. My wife's not real, real pleased. Over here is a heating control unit. It's, it's got a traditional thermostat and it does work. We have used it twice last fall, and uh, I'll tell you what, you want to turn it down low because it'll blow you out of here. Uh, and the exhaust fan in the bathroom, uh, we usually always run it, you know, unless we're not here. But, um, it keeps some air moving through, and uh, you, you need to crack a window when you're running that. Otherwise, it's it's pretty tight seal in this thing. And uh, if you don't crack a window, it'll you'll hear the fan struggle to push air out and suck air back in. Behind the couch, uh, it comes with a very nice table, which you can pull out and sit up right here to eat on. 
it's relatively thin but it's very sturdy we took it out because we don't really have the need to use it we just use that fold up you know uh, we take that outside that we do our cooking on that and we eat in the picnic benches I would take the one they provided outside the problem is is that it's it's covered with formica and then the underside is that open press board and you know it gets wet outside that thing would just come apart like a croissant after it got wet so we don't take it outside we just took it out of the trailer if we ever needed it we just put it back in it fits nicely behind the couch well I'm kind of running out of time here I need to get moving um, a couple things I really like these cool little looks you've seen these like for shower rods shower curtains that keeps everything inside the cabinets from falling out and the refrigerator it keeps the glass from bumping into each other and breaking and then my favorite is this uh, LED powered light it's uh, called a tough light made by tough light it's LED powered it has several modes I've used it it has a red light also which is great we have that uh, tent that we use for the dogs and we can hang it upside down in there and put the red light on it gives enough light and it doesn't attract bugs and then in the middle of the night if you need to make a run to the someplace uh, it's quite bright just carry that with you uh, it's LED it uh, is powered up through a USB port you can also use the battery inside to power your phone in an emergency. I think it was fairly expensive, but I really love it. It's solid. Waterproof. One thing I forgot to mention about the bed is it's heated. It actually has a, you know, a, a controller that you can plug in and heat it. We haven't tried that yet. Uh, but it seems like a better option than having that hot dry air blowing in here from the heater if you can get by with it. The other thing is, is underneath that cover, we just, we just cleaned everything out of here from a trip through the cover on. We have a three inch foam pad. Because the bed's pretty stiff. And if you're used to sleeping in comfort and then you want to go camping and glamping and be comfortable, buy a foam pad to go on the top. We have the memory foam goes on there and I'll tell you what it's very comfortable dogs seem to love it too of course thanks for watching click like and subscribe if you want to see more I will be posting some videos of our travels and campground reviews take care everybody